what the hell was that? Oh, hey, I, <laughs> so this is TT Be More Twin Flame. Love you guys, all you twin flamers. I love you. So I wanted to talk about, I don't even remember the last twin flame video I did. I don't even remember. So I say too much on my TikTok live and it doesn't get recorded. So nobody but whoever's the, the people that are on are the only one that gets that, the stuff. So I have to do more YouTube because that, it's on there. It doesn't disappear when I stop. So I want to talk about my twin flame, what's going on in my twin flame journey. And it was, I feel like it's almost a nine one one. I feel like it's really important for right now. So I'm driving down Baltimore. I drive for Lyft and I live in an hour away from Baltimore in Carroll County in Westminster. So I'm driving for a lift today. Now me and my twin flame, he is in control. People have asked me, are you submissive to him? What the fuck? Okay. Right. I mean, whatever. I don't use the word submissive, but he's in charge because he needs to be. He's a control freak. And that's fine with me because I don't want the stress of that. I can be very unstable. He's very stable and he's very stable. So that makes our relationship really stable. He, he has multiple personalities, but he is a very stable and me. I, so it's good. I let him control it because I ultimately trust that he's divinely guided and that we see each other when we're supposed to see each other. So, you know what I mean? It's not, oh, are you submissive? No, I'm not. What the fuck? That's religious. Who the fuck wants religion? Religion is oppressive. No, I'm not oppressed. It's my relationship with spirit and my relationship with my twin flame. And, you know, it was, it actually started before him. My second twin flame started it. My second twin flame would um, hit my phone up all the time. And so I went to see him. I have kids. Plus, I lived with my ex-husband, so I couldn't even have friends over my house. Hold on a second. Jesse, there's tofu and noodles if you want some. Um, so I couldn't have even friends come over during the day when I lived with it for the five years that I lived with my ex-husband. So my kids have never seen me with a man. They, they haven't. Um, so, uh, I go over, so my last twin flame, he, you know, I don't go where I'm not invited or welcomed or anything like that. That's weird. People will be like, well, why don't you, why don't you just go over? Do you know how rude that and invasive that is and how ridiculous that is to just show up at people's places? Un you know what I mean? I don't do that shit. And I don't expect that to be done with my place. But I lived with my ex-husband, so nobody showed up at my house. And I'm glad. I have kids. When you have kids, nobody should be showing up, especially a dude. Um, so he would text me all the time, and I would spend like three nights over his apartment because how did I do that? I don't know how I did that. I, because I just could work it out. It was my schedule. It was, it was, I lived with my ex husband. People were always, anyway, somehow I, I got that, but he started it by, um, he, he would call me over, right? I would live my life. He would call me over. So you could call it booty calls, whatever the fuck. I don't care. It's, I'm not, trying to define things and put things in a box. So, and then it just sort of passed over to my, my current twin flame that I let him be in charge. I do. So I never call him. He calls me. I never text him. He texts us. We don't even text really. Sometimes we do. Um, and I never am in charge of when we see each other. That's just how it is. Now, sometimes I'll text him. Sometimes I'll call him. But the norm is I don't. Now, I have a wounded inner child, divine feminine, 
a lot of abandonment issues, a lot of rejection issues, a lot of separation going on. Well, separation is dead people. Abandonment and rejection issues from childhood. So your twin flame heals. I always say this, right? Your twin flame is a tool from divine to heal your inner child and to heal. And so that you heal and you can ascend. You can't live your best life if you're low vibrational or if you're wounded. You can't do it. Woundedness is going to keep you low vibration. It's going to, woundedness is going to make you manipulate. It's going to make you, and manipulate is a dark energy. So, so instead of trusting divine, trusting spirit to meet your needs and learning how to meet your own needs and be responsible for your own well-being and happiness, we have to be responsible for our own well-being. So, right? So, what does my twin flame do? His purpose right now is to trigger the fuck out of me and to give me great sex. <laughs> Honestly, he's very good at both. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm laughing because I've been sexually abused a lot. And so sexual healing is a huge part of my well-being and a huge part of my healing journey. And I get really, even though I'm grown, I get really embarrassed talking about my sex. <laughs> ah! But so what happened tonight? I'm driving I happened to be in his part of town, which is a, a little bit over, about an hour away from me. So I knew I was going over there because the car, the ride I was in for Lyft was going over to East Baltimore. He lives in East Baltimore. So I, I was getting this. Now, normally I've driven right up to his neighbor. Like he lives in a whole apartment complex in East Baltimore. That's very popular and well-known. And I will drive right up to his door drive and lift and I leave him alone because that's what we do so I'm fine with being in his neighborhood but for some reason today I just wanted that like cuddle I just wanted to see him a lot of times I go see him and I look a wreck today I felt like you know I don't know there was just something in the air today I wanted to see him but Okay, I don't know how to explain this, but I was like a little girl getting all excited and losing my mind. So I had to keep breathing through that because I don't like that. That is a wounded inner child and she gets too crazy and she's unstable. So, but I could feel that. So I kept calming her down and breathing out and grounding her. Releasing the anxiety, releasing, um, you know, getting all caught up. And so I felt like I should call him. So I called, no, I texted him and I said, I wish I could see you. I never text him. Right. And, um, I never text him. So, and, and if I do, he usually rejects me. Thank you, honey. He usually rejects me because that's what he has to do. He's going to reject me as long as I need to be rejected in order to heal that energy of rejection that's in me. When you're a kid, if your parents or your dad, especially if you're a female, your mom, especially if you're a male, rejects you, even though they didn't mean to reject you, they love you, but you get this energy of rejection in you and it has to be purged. And the only way it can be purged is if you get it and you feel it and it's painful and it sucks and um okay so he calls me so first of all i texted him i i wanted to see him i'm in his neighborhood but i had to keep releasing it to the universe i wanted to see him thank you i wanted to see him but i gave it to the universe of what was best I want what's best, not just what I want. Um, and so expectations, I try to give, let go of. Expectations for myself and for him, let go of them. Give it to the universe, okay? Just be myself, okay? Grounded, whatever. So he calls me while well, I'm in the middle of a lift ride, so I didn't call him back. But 
I called him back as soon as I could. And he was like, hey, he's like, what are you doing? Blah, 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 blah. You know how he is. And he was awesome. I love talking to him. So then he's like, I, if you would have told me you wanted to see me in the middle of the week, then we could have seen each other tonight. But you should have told me in the middle of the week. And I was like, okay, cool. It's fine. It's fine. But then just the way he, he was like, I'm cooking. I was hungry. So I was like, just let me stop by. He's like, I have a hair appointment in an hour. And I'm like, so? Anyway, it's a whole thing. But I wasn't like pushing, pushing. But I, you know, I kind of, I took no for an answer. But I kind of put it out there like three times. So anyway, and he was stressed. He was, he likes to play video games. And he was on his video games. And he was cooking. And he was, he was, had a lot going on. So he said, you know next Sunday we'll get together. I said, okay, I'll see. So he had to go, whatever. So then oh, it came up. I felt rejected. I felt rejected. I got off the phone with him. Luckily a friend of mine texted me and said, are you okay? And I said, no. And I was able to drive down the highway in the rain and let that little girl feel that rejection. And I did, and it, it was a little cryy. I was disappointed, um, but I wasn't mad at him because I have no right to be mad at him. He wasn't rejecting me. I have no right to uh, project my woundedness on somebody else. Um, so, and then I wasn't alone. I had somebody there that didn't try to tell me that he was a piece of shit, that I deserve better because I manifested this. This is what I need and I trust my twin flame and I trust what I manifest is what I need at the time. I'm the energy. I'm the manifester. So it was so good. So I, I was able to process that. It wasn't a major pain. It was a little bit of pain and disappointment and I knew it was my inner child. And so I called him back and I said, and he answered the phone. See, there, in the past, there were times that it was so toxic and codependent that he didn't call. He didn't answer the phone. I wouldn't. It would be this whole dynamic I me mean, hating on him and being mad at him because I felt rejected. Ah, this time it's peaceful. It's good. I was able to process that, release it. I called him back just because I didn't have to, but I did. It was me. And I said, hey, I just want you to know it's really okay. I said, I didn't mean to stress you. And I really appreciate you. And he's like, it's okay. I, I wasn't stressed, but I could tell. I could hear it. He was stressed. Um, so you have to remember that twin flames, they're going, to, they're going to trigger whatever needs to be triggered. Hey, Nat, they're going to trigger whatever needs to be triggered. And I'm triggering him as well. He's triggering me. Male, female, 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 male, male, whatever the sex is. It doesn't matter. It's divine feminine and divine masculine. And, um, so we're seeing each other next Sunday. Everything's cool. I got to hear his voice. I got to be myself. I got to process and heal some more of my inner child. It's, it was beautiful. And I wanted, and, but also I got to sit in a space where somebody was not downing my twin flame or telling me I deserve better because I promise you nothing is better than your twin flame because what's better than somebody loving you enough to want you to be healed and whole. That's why people stop, stop believing these fucking lying energy readers that use cards that are bullshit and that use this energy of manipulation. That's manipulation. You deserve to be whole. You deserve to heal that inner child. So everybody else that's telling you that, that you deserve better, that's bullshit. You don't deserve anything better. There is nothing better than your twin flame. And there's nothing better than to be healed and whole. Why? Because the world has never seen a healed, whole, and complete female. Never. So the pain that I feel around him is healing. The pain that you feel around him is probably your inner child towards your dad. And it's probably rejection or abandonment. And yeah, you need to purge that. You need to let it come out and cry it. And But do it in a place of support and love. Not where somebody's going to be telling you 
So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. It's a 15 minute video. Like and subscribe. Share my channel. I love you guys. You're the best. There is a divine plan. I promise you there is a divine plan. I'm so happy that I'm getting stronger and stable. You Listen, there's another thing. You feel like you should call what you do inner child healing energy work. Maybe. Um, so, what did I want to say? There, I, I even know this. I'm even learning this from my twin flame and from energy. The best thing you can do is learn how to be stable. Learn how to be secure. Miss Jean knows this, if she's still here. Um, her, her brother, no, your friend, whoever that was, Jeffrey, showed us. He's the dead person that showed us. St I think he showed us stable energy. You need to release your feelings, process your feelings in a safe place and not project them onto somebody else and not judge yourself or judge others. It's got to be a safe zone and a clean zone, which clean means no ju no judgment. And and you need to get stable. Why why Yeah, you are. Why do I need to get stable? Hey, Sandy, baby. Why do we need stable energy? This is going to blow your fucking mind. I mean, maybe not what I'm saying right now, but it's going to fucking blow your mind. Why do you want stable energy? Why is your divine masculine loves you so much? He's going to lead you in stableness. He's going to lead you in security. That inner child needs to be healed. But why does she need to be healed? Because it's going to stabilize your energy, stabilize and ground you so you can receive. You cannot receive if you're unstable. You can't. So why is it important that you receive everything that you manifest that's good? You got to learn. It's got to come through your heart. It can't come through your heart if you're if you're rejected and you're abandoned and you're you're not going to learn how to receive. You're not going to receive your value. You're not going to receive your worth. You're not going to receive all your money, all your love, all your good, good. Manifesting. And this is weird. I look weird. <laughs> My hair is weird because I don't, I washed it and lay and slept in it. But you are beautiful. You are divine. And there is an amazing divine plan. Okay. I promise you. Give me just give me a year. No, give me six months. Give me a month. No, <laughs> give me a day. Give me a week. I don't know. Give me some time to prove it. Follow me. Do what I say. <laughs> I sound like a control freak. Look at my hair. Hold on. I, I feel like a dog. Um, and I promise you, your life's going to get better. I promise you, you're going to get stable. You're going to be learn to receive and it's going to be beyond anything that you can imagine. So I'm not doing this for money, although I deserve money and I will have money. I'm doing this because it's my purpose and I'm a divine feminine and that's the way it's going to go down. We're going to heal. So love you. Thank you so much for being my subscriber, for following me. Oh my God. I value and appreciate you. I hope you feel it. Adios.